Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our 35th anniversary celebration. The 50-50 raffle will close in 10 minutes. Be sure to purchase your tickets now out in the foyer. Again, the 50-50 raffle will end in 10 minutes. Thank you.
ladies and gentlemen, if you can please take your seats, we'll be starting in just a few minutes. Again, if you can please take your seats, we're going to get started in just a few minutes. Thank you.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome again to our 35th anniversary celebration. Please join me in welcoming to the stage the Director of Community Engagement for Hospice of the Valley, Lynn Sue Cooney. Okay, you have an amazing voice. Why are you not up here, Mr. Velvet Pipes? <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome and good afternoon. I don't know if I should say good afternoon or good evening, but a very warm welcome to all the guests who are here in the ballroom joining us tonight, both in person and also virtually. We're so excited to celebrate the big three, five, 35 years of leadership. Let's begin with a little shout out for all of our virtual guests. Do you guys wanna just give them a round of applause? We're glad you tuned in. And of course, thanks to all of you for coming here tonight uh, and being here in this beautiful ballroom at the JW Marriott Camelback Inn. It's been way too long in coming, has it not? Yeah, we are happy to be back in person together. So welcome, welcome, welcome. First off, let's begin by thanking our generous sponsors that have helped make tonight possible. Nationwide, Cox Communications, Prestige Cleaners, and Saks Tyranny. Thank you so much. Now we also have some special guests who are attending both virtually and in person from the Scottsdale City Council. So if you are here in person when I call your name, would you stand up? And if you're joining us virtually, we're very glad that you're here as well. Councilwoman Linda Milhaven. <laughs> Councilwoman Solange Whitehead. <laughs> Councilwoman Kathy Littlefield. <laughs> Councilwoman Tammy Caputi. <laughs> Councilwoman Betty Janik. Councilman Tom Durham, and our own class three alumni and now Mayor David Ortega. And I just wanna give a very personal thank you for inviting me to be your MC tonight, as you heard. I'm Lynn Sue Cooney, I'm Director of Community Engagement at Hospice of the Valley. It's a role that I am very honored to have after a rather long, and we will not get into exactly how many decades <laughs> I was on the air, but a very fulfilling career as a newscaster for 12 News. I am a big believer in supporting community leaders, and I feel very privileged to be here today to honor some really amazing people. So let's begin tonight by hearing from your Scottsdale Leadership Board President. Please give a warm welcome for Andy Robertson. Thank you, Lynn Sue, and welcome everyone. Woo, it's nice to see so many faces in person. We've definitely been through a lot this last year, haven't we? but not as much as we've been through and accomplished in the last 35 years. As you have probably noticed around the room, on your tables, and even here on the stage, we have certainly achieved a lot. When Dr. Art Dekabuter, Don Ruff, Gary Shapiro, and Sam Campana got together and started Scottsdale Leadership back in 1986, they envisioned a program that motivated individuals to step up as leaders and help shape Scottsdale and the surrounding communities. When the first class graduated with 21, they knew they were onto something. But after 35 years, we have graduated 1,225 alumni. <laughs> Made up of corporate, nonprofit, and small business executives, as well as civic and community leaders. Eight alumni have served as city council members. Two alumni have served and are currently serving as mayor two legislative reps, and one served as senator. 
Scottsdale leadership and its alumni are consistently sought out to engage in grassroots initiatives and community conversations regarding the future and growth of our city. Our collaborative efforts help to move issues forward from an apolitical stance. Alumni have had a significant impact on not only the city of Scottsdale, but the valley and throughout the state, influencing the preservation of open space, improving the, call, the quality of youth programs and our education system, championing public art, and sitting on boards and raising hundreds of thousands of dollars for nonprofit organizations. The photos around the room and on your tables bring back fond memories and show Scottsdale leadership's involvement. One of my favorites is the board of alumni dressed up for Parada del Sol and riding on the flatbed trailer. We will be participating in the Parada del Sol next spring and I cannot wait. Now after that walk down memory lane, we're going to move back into the present and I would like to welcome back Lynn Sue Cooney to the stage. Thank you, Andy. I personally love your centerpieces. It was her idea. <laughs> and I might steal it for the next Hospice of the Valley event. All right, what an amazing 35 years. Scottsdale leadership has made a huge impact on the community. So let's, shall we, recognize some wonderful leaders and begin the awards part of our presentation. The first award is the 2020 Drinkwater Community Leadership Award. This award is named after the Honorable Herb Drinkwater, who served as Scottsdale's mayor and a city council member for more than 25 years. He was always willing to introduce Scottsdale to people who might be interested in becoming part of your city. It is because of Herb's on-purpose living and positive intent for the community that Scottsdale leadership honors a community leader with that same sense of purpose every year. Presenting this award is a community member equally as impressive, Randy Nussbaum, attorney with Sachs Tyranny. For more than 40 years, Randy has assisted individuals and businesses with complex bankruptcy protection debtor and creditor, transaction and litigation matters. He especially enjoys helping his clients achieve their business and financial objectives using innovative legal strategies. Committed to community service, Randy is a 1990 graduate of Scottsdale Leadership Class 4. He has volunteered for that organization for more than 30 years, serves on its advisory board, and is the recipient of the prestigious Frank W. Hodges Alumni Achievement Award, which we'll hear more about. Randy serves on the advisory boards for the Scottsdale Center for the Performing Arts, Scottsdale Historical Society, and Scottsdale Community College. He served as a Sterling Awards jurist, served on the Scottsdale Chamber of Commerce, and received the Chamber's 2017 Volunteer of the Year Award. Recognized for his lifelong commitment to community service, Randy joined the distinguished rosters of honorees inducted into the Scottsdale History Hall of Fame in 2018. And most recently, he was named the 2021 edition of the Best Lawyers in America. Without further ado, please welcome Randy Nussbaum. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Let me explain why I love presenting this award. I started a tradition a few years ago where I meet with the honorees at lunch one-on-one. -on -one. As a result, I got to know people like Dion Kuzak, who's here today, Charlie Smith, Bill Walton. These are icons. These are pioneers of the city, but they all had one thing in common. Everyone loved Mayor Drinkwater. Well, today, I got to meet with Janie Ellis. I went out to her complex at Cattle Track. If you've not been there, it's amazing. We had lunch. She became a friend during this lunch. But here's the problem with Janie. 
Janie is so modest, so humble, two qualities I'm not familiar with, but she's so, she's so modest and so humble, she would not talk about herself. She did talk about Mayor Drinkwater, told me a couple of stories that were so inappropriate, I'm praying she'll tell you them today. But she wouldn't talk about herself. But she did tell me something which really made me proud to be a member of my law firm. I didn't know this. She was close friends, very close friends with Cy Sachs, the founder of Sachs Tierney, and today is a very close friend of my partner, Mike Rooney, who's here today. Um, made me so happy to be a member of a firm which coincidentally is located on Drinkwater Boulevard. But let me tell you for a couple of seconds a story about this honoree because she won't do it herself. In 2007, the Sandra Day O'Connor Institute was going to move the Sandra Day O'Connor House to Papago Park. A commission was formed of leading citizens and they elected Janie to be in charge of this commission. And in 2009, when they moved the house, Mike Rooney told me she was out there in her hard hat in inclement weather, making sure that every brick, every stone was transported correctly. And as a result now, we have this beautiful Sandra Day O'Connor house in Papago Park. But when I read the article about this whole process, not one time was Janie mentioned because she did not want to be in the limelight. This is the type of person we want to honor that we want to have up here on the stage today. So please join me in welcoming Janie Ellis to the stand to be this year's Drinkwater Award winner. Thank you. One word that I would use to describe Janie Ellis is sensational. Sorry, they, they, rolled. they rolled it. I'll be back. <laughs> the one word that I would use to describe Janie Ellis is sensational. Janie Ellis will be best known for her absolute dedication and love for Scottsdale. She's expressed the support for the arts in most every way imaginable. Janie is one of my dearest friends. Everybody stands in line to be one of Janie's best friends. Scottsdale's history is Janie and the Ellis family's history. Her grandfather homesteaded here in 1914, two years after Arizona became a state. Janie lived at Cattle Track with her mom and dad, George and Rachel, all those years, and her two fun-loving, talented brothers, Michael and David. When many people step foot on that property for the first time, they're just amazed and blown away that such a space, such an environment still exists. The way that she grew up around so many interesting people, I just, I can't single out one, but the, the fact that her neighbors over time were people like the artist Phil Curtis, the artist Fritz Scholder, uh, the, the people that lived in the stable gallery, Avis Reed and her daughter Avis. Her dad literally built the stage that she learned ballet um, in her backyard. Um, her brothers were talented. They built things, um, one of which is in the Smithsonian, a racing car that her brother built. And one of those cars is in the Smithsonian and the other one is in Janie's bathroom. Janie is so deserving of the Drinkwater Award because like Herb Drinkwater, she epitomizes leadership qualities that I admire. She is eternally optimistic. She has been such a leader in the arts, but in the community as well. She doesn't shy away from politics. Mayor Drinkwater loved her. We had meetings there. It was the anchor for all kinds of uh, commissions and planning meetings and drawings and uh, visions and dreams about Scottsdale. The people that she um, shares information with, and yet she does it in such a way where she's never a name dropper. She's just 
thrilled to have had them in her life, and she wants other people to know about those people. You do it without pursuing the accolades and uh, all that comes with that. She's a very humble person. When Janie heard that they were gonna tear down Justice O'Connor's home in Paradise Valley, an adobe that her father had provided the brick for, she said, we can move that house. And the world would tell you, with their conventional wisdom, you don't move adobe homes. Well, you don't tell that to Janie Ellis. She cusses like a sailor. <laughs> I think that would surprise people. When she's not reading from a script, at times her language can get a little risque and rough for some. The one word I would use to describe Janie Ellis is muse. She is such an inspiration to so many people in various ways. While she honors the past, it, she embraces the future. So she has that great ability to marry the past, but make things contemporary in her historic preservation and other efforts. She really shows up uh, when needed. She speaks up when it's appropriate. She comes up with great ideas uh, to consider, and she follows through. Uh, she simply delivers on the promise. Not sure what I did to deserve this award, and I've been nervous wreck trying to figure out how I can live up to your expectations. Thank you, Sax Tierney and Randy Newsom, for sponsoring this award. My association with the law firm goes back many years, and they have saved the Ellis Derriere many times. <laughs> they are expensive, but they're really good. <clears throat> Herb Drinkwater Award, awesome. We all loved Herb, and he loved the hell out of Scottsdale. Herb was a promoter, a champion of Scottsdale. He and Jackie would jump in in any effort for to support the community. A first class practical joker. He was fun to flirt and tease, probably not political correct anymore. I have never considered myself a leader and I'm sure as hell not a follower. I'm still trying to figure out what I wanna do when I grow up. I am lucky to have a neighborhood, a community, a team of support, many of you who are in the room. Please know that you too are honored with this award. At Cattle Track, we live in the present, we try to do an exceptional job of honoring the past, and our goal is to continue nurturing artists of all disciplines to enhance our community with sparkling, innovative, daring cultural contributions. And we continue to say, talent and energy, no lazy sons of bitches. <laughs> I'm humbled, thank you. Yes, you better hold that statue right side up. Or we'll think you had too much to drink tonight. Well, isn't she a charming mix of humble and sassy? And thank you for keeping it G-rated with one small exception. Whew. Okay. All right. I understand um, that she has a lot more entertaining stories, so maybe we could catch her after the show tonight and get hear a few more. Our next award that we would like to present is the 2020 Hodges Alumni Achievement Award. This award honors Scottsdale Leadership alumni who illustrate the passion and commitment that Frank Hodges, Scottsdale Leadership Class 1, had for his community. Now Frank was Assistant Fire Chief with Royal Metro and his dedication to the people of Scottsdale knew no boundaries.
His efforts were tireless, and his legacy lives on through the lives he touched. His life, his spirit, and his dedication are honored through this annual Alumni Achievement Award. The 2020 Hodges Alumni Achievement Award is being presented tonight by Don Fry, owner of Prestige Cleaners. Since 1964, Scottsdale's Prestige Cleaners formed a community bond stemming from the father-son bond of Don and his late father, Don E. Fry. Prestige not only demonstrates a commitment to family, but to the Scottsdale community, just like Don himself. While still in elementary school, Don joined his dad in the business. He would hang flyers to draw business, and then he became the first janitor. When he reached high school, he started working on the customer service side at the counter, and he eventually joined the management team. He opened the first branch store in 1974 and was branch manager for eight years. And guess what? That store off Scottsdale Road, north of Shea Boulevard, is still open. And it also houses the corporate headquarters. Since the beginning, Prestige has had a long history of community involvement. Don has served on the boards of many uh, community organizations, such as the Boys and Girls Clubs of Greater Scottsdale, the YMCA, and the Scottsdale Area Chamber of Commerce. Please give a warm welcome to Don Fry. Thank you so much. I can actually see this. Um, I get a couple seconds of my own. I knew Frank. Frank was in our Kiwanis Club, McCormick Ranch Club. I'm still in that. He was a charo, and I'm a charo. So when this award became available, Prestige Cleaners jumped on it, and we're very, very proud to still be sponsoring it. Now, this year's award recipient is Lisa Randall. Lisa is Community Relations Manager for Family Promise and deeply connected throughout the community. She attended Saguaro High School, Sabercats. She's volunteered for a multiple of organizations, including Keep Scott Still Beautiful, an affiliate of Keep America Beautiful, Scottsdale Pride Commission, Partners for Paiute Neighborhood Center, National Charity League Sonoran Centennial Chapter, Scottsdale Historical Society, and is a alumni of Scottsdale Leadership Class 28. So, Lisa, we have a video. The one word I describe Lisa with is generous. She's kind and caring and gentle, and you just want to help her. I just think she cares, and cares a lot. Lisa is one of those rare individuals that is both willing to volunteer their time and has a great skill set. She grew up here, and I love her history in Scottsdale. She went to Saguaro High School. She married her high school sweetheart. She just exudes community. I mean, she loves Scottsdale and, and would do anything for Scottsdale, and that's really obvious. Hot summer morning, July 20-something. I get there about 5.30 because I'm feeling responsible. But right behind me is Lisa Randall. She has scheduled 150 volunteers for a 10-hour day, so well organized. I mean, and here's Lisa, the consummate host. The event was perfect. Everything was perfect. She's been very passionate about serving the city and keeping it beautiful. She's been passionate about the history of Scottsdale. Uh, and she's been passionate about helping those uh, for instance, in the Partners for Paiute uh, group and the Paiute Center and then in Family Promise, those in need in our city. Through thick and thin, hot and cold, inside, outside, there was one constant, her hair was perfect. I don't know how she does it. She must wake up at four in the morning. I don't know how she does it. <laughs> Both Lisa and I knew Frank Hodges and it's really special when somebody who actually knew Frank and knew what a generous soul he was, can be the recipient of this award. I think Lisa will be best known for her efforts, care and compassion for people that could use a hand. She's kind. Wait, wait, <laughs> cracking me up. <laughs> 
she went out of her way to invite me to Major Suarez to join her at her table. I was taken aback. She'll kill me for this, but as I understand it, at one point she was David Spade's love interest in high school. Well, I will tell you a secret. We were... I feel really loved. But Don, my dear friend, I think you owe me a lunch. Right? Oh. Wow. To my fellow honorees, I am deeply moved that you asked me to join your club. And I will spend every day working to honor your confidence in me. I'm not done, and I know you're not done. To my husband, who created a life that allowed me to do all these crazy things, my kids who put up with dining rooms full of stuff for the next event, right? I am so blessed. Scottsdale leadership changed my life. It led me to my current job, my first job. At Family Promise, we are an emergency homeless shelter here in Scottsdale. To the Scottsdale leadership staff, board of directors, advisory, I am, I am so grateful that you feel I belong in this club. To be an alumni, I know I am amongst my beloved friends in this room. But this honor has a deeper meaning for me. As Don shared, when Frank passed, he was the assistant fire chief here in Scottsdale. And at that same time, my husband, class 10, was a young fire captain. But his wife, Sherry, was my neighborhood childhood friend. This room is so full of love and commitment and passion. And Scottsdale leadership, I am so grateful that every day you work to inspire, to educate those next leaders in our community. And I just feel blessed to be a part of this amazing group. Thank you so much for this honor. I am deeply grateful. All right, so we have to add this. In addition to all of Lisa's many accomplishments, her pride and joy are her two children and two grandchildren. In fact, her daughter, Michelle Collier, also happens to be on the staff with Scottsdale Leadership. Probably already know that. <laughs> all right, the last award of the evening is pretty special. It is awarded to a Scottsdale junior or senior high school student. The Jenkins Youth Leadership Award honors William C. Bill Jenkins as a 29-year Scottsdale High School teacher and Scottsdale mayor from 1974 to 1980. Bill worked tirelessly and was their student government advisor. As mayor, Bill took Scottsdale through rapid growth and also he got the city through a recession. 
Now, this last award was to be introduced by Susie Smith Everhart of Cox Communications. But Susie, I understand that you're attending virtually this evening. Uh, she's not able to be here in person due to Cox company rules because of COVID-19. So we will have the executive director of Scottsdale Leadership step in and, and do that introduction, Leanne Witt. But we'd still love to share a little bit about Susie. So here we go. Susie is an alumni of Class 29, and she's the Director of Community Relations. She serves on the board and the Executive Committee for the Metropolitan Phoenix Boys and Girls Clubs, and she was the Chair of the 2006 STARS Youth of the Year, the Board and Membership Advisory Council for the Scottsdale Area Chamber of Commerce, the Board and Executive Committee for Arizona Business and Education Coalition, and the Super Bowl 2008 Preparatory Task Force. Additional past board and committee leadership roles include women in cable television, the board of directors, the executive committee for the Maricopa County Sports Commission, the marketing committee for the Valley of the Sun United Way, and the board of Phoenix Suns Night Hoops. We wish you were here, Susie, but we understand. So everyone, let's please welcome Leanne Witt to the stage. Thank you, Lynn Sue. And Susie, I'll try to do you justice, but man, she's such a fun meister. I really wish you were here tonight. We miss you. Cox is strongly committed to empowering the future generation of leaders and proudly sends accolades and congratulations to Natalie Foster on receiving this well-deserved and prestigious award. Cox says that we strive to develop and support various initiatives that impact people's lives with a critical focus on youth and education, diversity, and environmental issues. If we can now watch this wonderful video of Natalie Foster. The one word I would use to describe Natalie would be focused. She's been a valuable asset to Saguaro High School and our community because of her actions and her leadership. As a kid, I was always really interested in the outside world and learning more, and especially sciences. I would sit in my backyard for hours and like play with the worms and dig for stuff, always like looking for new things. I first met Natalie when she joined the robotics team as a freshman. She's blossomed into quite a leader. I mean, she motivates the other students uh, by example. STEM can be approachable in so many different ways, and we just want to reduce that intimidation factor for students so they realize that STEM is not only approachable, but it's something that's fun. And she gets along with all types of kids. We have a very diverse population at Saguaro High School, uh, and she's very inclusive, and she's willing to share leadership. The pandemic forced a much, much higher student exposure to the internet at a much younger age. So we knew that this initiative was really needed, especially in elementary schools, middle schools, for those students who don't have those skills to protect themselves on the internet, but they're on the internet every day for school. She listens. She listens to what, what people say, and she says, well, let's try. Let's just try and do it. Mr. Jenkins was this phenomenal community member and community leader who was always working towards the betterment of the community and creating a better environment for all of those that he was surrounded by. And knowing that I am following in the footsteps of such a wonderful person pushes me to continue what I'm doing and continue to make that positive impact on all those around me. She's become quite a speaker and she's become quite a representative for our school, Math and Science Academy, and Saguaro Robotics. There is no door that should remain closed for any individual because if you have the drive, you can open that door. Whether it's kicking it down or making a new door, you can always find a way through. Before you 
a start, okay? Please. No, come, come join me, come join me. I confess, I skipped over the script just a few minutes. So as you just learned, Natalie Foster is the 2020 Bill Jenkins Youth Leadership Award winner. She's a junior at Saguaro High School with a plan to pursue engineering at ASU. She has written that a leader must represent those without a voice or the ability to speak up. In her high school career, she has helped many find their voice through her deep involvement in science, technology, engineering, and math, quote, STEM groups. Some of the groups that she works with have included Sisters in STEMs, CyberSys, and the Robotics Program. We enjoyed that video. I am awe, in awe of you, young lady, and we are so deeply happy for you. Now you get to talk. Thank okay. you so much. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Natalie Foster, and as said, I'm a junior at Saguaro High School, and I am honored to be here tonight accepting the Jenkins Youth Leadership Award. From a very young age, I always gravitated towards leadership roles because I enjoyed knowing that I was bringing people together to create something better. And for many years, one of my ultimate goals has just been to positively impact all those around me. And the initiatives that I now lead in high school, Sisters in STEM, CyberSys, Robotics, have all allowed me to reach hundreds of young learners in the community, showing them that they can do whatever they put their minds to, bringing to light all of these different kinds of opportunities that they have that they can take advantage of in their futures has completely changed my course for the future. I went from only thinking about STEM to now realizing I wanna share this love to anyone and everyone that I can. I am so, so excited for what the future can hold, and I plan to stay involved in Scottsdale for the rest of my life, continuing to try and better this community for everyone. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, she just took her mask off and she's got the most beautiful smile. Congratulations, Natalie. Okay, what do you agree? An amazing and inspiring group of award winners. Pretty, pretty incredible. Congratulations to each and every one of you. I think it's awesome that she's majoring in engineering. <laughs> Scottsdale leadership has enjoyed an impressive 35 years so many of you in this room and those of you attending virtually have had an impact. You've shaped the path that Scottsdale has taken. Thank you so much for everything that you've done. But the question is, what does the next 35 years look like? I would like your two-term president of the board of directors, Andy Robertson, to come back up here and share with us the future of Scottsdale leadership. Andy? Thank you, Lynn Sue. Wow, to be, I am so humbled to be in a room with such greatness. We have some big shoes to fill for the next winners. I have some exciting news that has taken place this spring. We reinstated our advisory council with 20 notable community leaders that are providing wise counsel to our board of directors, acting as ambassadors and advocates in our community and business networks, and acting as mentors to each of our board of directors, or board directors. Although not all of our advisory council could attend today, I would like to ask those members of the advisory council to please stand up and join me in a warm round of applause.
Thank you for all you're doing for our board. I would also like to thank and acknowledge our hardworking board of directors for this year's service. This is the first time we've met in this entire year. It's, it's been wonderful. Could I please have all the members of the board stand so that we can thank you with our applause. Chairing and serving on a committee for an annual event of this magnitude takes an awesome and dedicated committee of hard workers, and that they are. We'd like to especially recognize Chair Allison Dunaway, Class 31, and a huge thank you to the entire committee and to our staff for making this day so successful. Thank you. We have more to share with you. I invite our executive director, Leanne Witt, to the stage to give us the good news. Okay, I am so glad to see all of you all here. I've seen you from the neck up for the last 14 months. It's really good to see all of you today. And I'm thankful that you all wore pants and not your pajama bottoms. So yes, it has been an incredible year despite the challenges that all of us have faced. We have learned to adjust, be innovative, and be open to new ideas. COVID did not get us down. Let me give you a brief recap of some of the amazing things that we've been able to do this year. On the screen behind me, there will be a slide. We developed a three-year strategic plan. When our board met last summer, the intent was to be there for one full day. We broke it down into three half days over the course of a couple of months due to COVID. But we're going to finish year one in fine fashion. And due to the addition of the advisory council and a lot of people that have become involved, we have some great creative ideas to go into year two of our strategic plan. We were also part fortunate to partner with the Chamber of Commerce, Scott, and the Scottsdale Community College last year to produce four candidate forums. It went virtual except for the last one that resulted in three new council members and a new mayor. Congratulations. We have created the Art Decabooter Scholarship designed for an active community leader that would be an asset to our program and would enjoy and benefit from this scholarship. With Mary Decabooter's help and a few others, we will design the criteria and put that out for award next fall. Very excited about that. Due to COVID, we decided that we were not going to go flat this year, but we would take a smaller class, class 35, and we delayed our start to January so that we could meet in person. And so far, it has been fantastic. They have been super sports about it, and it was well worth it to meet in person. We also just celebrated our newsletter one year anniversary. And can you believe it? We've had a consistent open rate of about 38%. We get comments in all the time that they're so happy to see the blast from the past and learn about what's going on in Scottsdale leadership today and a few memories from the past. Scottsdale leadership is going to open a new exhibit at the Scottsdale Civic Center Library in the Scottsdale Heritage Section connection area. It will be called Memories and Milestones Through the Eyes of Scottsdale Leadership Alumni and Drinkwater Award Recipients. And that will open June 25th, which happens to be the 70th birthday of Scottsdale. The Historical Committee will continue to work on all facets of our history so that we are up to speed and prepared for the next 35 years. We will conclude our 35th celebration at the December 10th Spirit of Community Awards Luncheon. So put that on your calendars now, December 10th. As you may have seen by the poster and behind me, we were so fortunate to have Craig Miller and Dr. Franny, Francis Mills Yerger, but we call her Dr. Franny, 
to meet up in our office before COVID and talk about the taglines that go with each class. And we turn those into fun emblems, which has turned into some very fun class competitions. And we have a lot more fun involved with those emblems. And we really want to give a round of applause to Craig and Franny for being our inspiration there. One of the most fun projects that we've done this year is our podcast called Scottsdale Frame of Mind. Scottsdale Frame of Mind is an inside view into the people that make our Scottsdale community special. Our guests include some familiar names as well as everyday warriors. With the help of our amazing host, we are able to hear their stories and be inspired by their journeys, learn from their mistakes, and listen to their perspectives on current events and issues. Already, we have welcomed Dennis Robbins, Rachel Sacco, Brian Bedner, Tom Shannon, Marion Kelly, Nick Molinari, just to name a few. Although we've been so lucky to have such great guests appear on our podcast, we could not do it without our two co-hosts, which are actually from Class 34, Jenna Cole and Andrew Volkmer. I'm sorry that they could not be here today, but they have truly been the backbone of the success of our podcast. Speaking of competition, we just completed our Arizona Gives Day in Class Challenge and surpassed our original goal and, and raised, our original goal was 10,500. We actually raised a little over $15,000 with the participation of 255 donors. Thank you all for your competitive spirit. More importantly, the alumni engagement of the different classes was tremendous and we wanna keep that momentum going. I have to just tell you, my computer was ding, notice, ding, notice, ding, notice for 24 hours. And the emails flying back and forth between the classes of, oh my gosh, I just donated. You do it. When are we going to get together? Happy hour on the 23rd. Why don't y'all come here? Oh, I just missed so-and-so. It was so much fun. We want to capitalize on that momentum. I have a huge announcement. Will class 35 please stand? Come on, let's stand. And be recognized as our first 100% class giving and alumni dues. You will forever hold this title and you now have bragging rights forever. You've set the standard for our future classes, and we congratulate you. What an impact. What a legacy. And now I ask you all, what will your legacy be? We have created the Scottsdale Leadership Legacy Circle for planned giving, and we have three members already. As you can see, those that wear the red pin are part of the Legacy Circle. I hope that you will consider Scottsdale leadership in your bequeaths, so that we can continue to develop community leaders. With new programming and new opportunities for our organization, I invite you to visit our table back there to see our Legacy Circle pin, take a flyer that's on your table, and the list of benefits of becoming a member of the Scottsdale Leadership Legacy Circle. Thank you so much. Thank you, Leanne. Well, thank you, Leanne, for all that you, Dana, and Michelle do to ensure the success of our programs. Our time, yes, without them, we could not, we couldn't do it. You are invaluable. Our time today is quickly coming to an end, and we have a raffle winner to announce. Before we pull that lucky number, let's give a round of applause to our current Class 35. Thank you for all your help today and for being so adaptable this year. It's hard to believe this year has almost come to an end. Boy, what a year. Speaking of year end, recruitment for Class 36 has been in process. The final application deadline is May 19th, and we will begin interviews on June 1st. Barring any more unforeseen events, 
We are planning to hold Class 36 in person beginning on September 24th. If there are any questions or you know of any potential great candidates, please contact us or visit our website for the application information. Now for the moment you've all been waiting for, let's pull the lucky raffle ticket. Lin Su, will you do the honors, please? I do want the responsibility. I did really <laughs> stir it up. She's, she's working hard over there. Yes. All right. The total amount raised was 5330 Did you all hear that? That's insane. Okay. 2,665. Wow. I was told that if the name was on the back, it's a virtual winner. So we it's have a, a, virtual, we have a winner. virtual winner. Manon Saba. Saba? Marion Saba. I don't have my glasses on. Marion Saba. Virtual winner. I love it. Thank you everyone for celebrating 35 years with us today. Let's also give a huge round of applause for Lynn Sue Cooney. Thank you so much for being part of our celebration. Here's to the next 35 years. Thank you.